Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I'm Peter Gross, co-host of the original Wild Kingdom with Marlon Perkins and Jim Fowler. You know, when Wild Kingdom aired in the 1960s and 70s, many of the episodes documented wildlife research efforts. Marlon and Jim accompanied scientists all over the world to observe animals and their natural behaviors. Some of the techniques you'll see in tonight's episodes are no longer necessary by today's standards, but the work is still just as important. Wild Kingdom took viewers to the far corners of the world and cultivated an appreciation for animals and their habitats. Marlon and Jim showed us the importance of preserving the natural world, not just for animals, but for our very own quality of life. And that's good news for all of us in the Wild Kingdom. So sit back and enjoy Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom, right here on RFD TV. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom is presented by Mutual of Omaha, people you can count on. Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. In a high valley of the Rockies runs a sparkling little stream called Broken Branch. Years ago, a family of beavers built a dam across the stream. Since then, the size of the dam has increased and resulted in the formation of an extensive pond habitat. The animal most likely to be seen at the pond is the one responsible for its creation, the beaver but included among the different animals attracted to the beaver's impoundment to drink or seek food is the bear, the moose, and the cougar. There are many others as well. Often when these animals come here, they encounter one another, and so interesting incidents are not at all uncommon. The pond is located in the beautiful, peaceful, and virtually untouched wilderness of the Rockies. And we call our story of this lovely spot, The Pond at Broken Branch. The annual transformation wrought by spring's gentle touch is upon the face of the land. Snowy slopes and frosted forests have given way to lush greens in the high altitude woodlands and meadows. It's as if on this fine, crisp morning, a new world has begun in the area of the beaver pond at Broken Branch. The beavers which live in this lodge built their dam here and created this pond several years ago as one of a series of ponds on the rushing little brook known as Broken Branch. The music of tumbling waters is a lovely accompaniment to the new vegetation which is swelling and growing everywhere. This area has become a hub of activity for many of the animals living in this vicinity, such as the cougar returning from his successful night's hunt. Long ago, this cougar learned the futility of trying to catch beavers, and now he mostly ignores their lodge and the many different activities they engage in here. The beavers themselves have come to know there really isn't much danger for them from predators, so long as they remain in or very near the water of their pond. The cougar fed well last night, and now will sleep almost all day in his secluded den. Neither the cat nor that graceful winged hunter, the red-tailed hawk, are any longer the great danger they were once. The beaver is no longer a tiny, vulnerable kit. Now he knows exactly when it's quite safe for him to casually waddle up on shore and spend long, pleasant minutes grooming himself.
The beaver is quite accustomed to the animals attracted here, whether they're relatively small or very large. The moose is a frequent visitor, methodically seeking out the succulent water plants which it finds so tasty. The warmth of the early morning sun has brought out a mother skunk with her new litter near the pond. For these little striped youngsters, it's a wonderfully new and exciting world, full of all sorts of fascinating sights and smells. For now, the babies are carefree and oblivious to the possibility of danger but their mother is always watchful for their safety. The hawk perched nearby is no real threat, but that's not the case with this big badger. The mother skunk's protectiveness is enough to encourage the more powerful badger to move away quickly. The badger's another of the predators which come here both to drink and to hunt for smaller animal prey, which is also attracted to the pond. While such predators are about, the beavers wisely keep to the water where the advantage is theirs. Although the cougar is not the largest predator in this habitat, it is the most ferocious and has little to fear from any other animal. Nevertheless, where prey is concerned, there is a certain rivalry which sometimes develops between the cougar and the black bear. Both prey on smaller animals, and so they are jealous of their territories. The bear will more readily enter water than the cougar, sometimes trying to catch trout, and sometimes just for enjoyment. Because of territorial overlapping, sharp jealousy arises if one happens to encroach on a particular place the other considers his own. Fortunately, the tree that the black bear decides to climb right now is not one that is the territorial claim of the cougar. The smaller animals in this habitat, such as ground squirrels, must constantly keep alert for the many predators here. This morning, as usual, there's a red fox hunting in the area, and he scented a ground squirrel under this log. He's a relentless hunter with an especially keen nose, but he's also somewhat fearful of the larger predators of this area. The bear has been watching the activities at the log below, and his curiosity has been aroused by what's been happening, so he's decided to investigate. Now the bears detected the same scent that attracted the fox, and he knows there's a ground squirrel hidden under this log. It may take a bit of study, but somehow there's a way to catch it. Under the bright midday sun, the bear is still trying to get at the ground squirrel hiding under the log. At last, he puts his great strength to use. Still, his sense of smell is not as keen as the fox's, and he has difficulty pinpointing the location of the squirrel. The cunning red fox now makes his move. Yeah. 
The bear is not even quite sure what's happened, although it's beginning to dawn on him that somehow he's lost his prey. As he often does, the fox hides his prey for later. Finally, the bear leaves the log, and immediately the fox checks to see if another ground squirrel might still be there. For the bear, it's a lunch of grass instead of meat. For the fox, it's pressing his luck too far to hope for another ground squirrel and to be careless in passing the disappointed bear. She reburies the carcass much more deeply, but now there's trouble coming, and it's not the fox. The bear apparently feels he has a claim to the dead prey, too. <laughs> However, the badger is not to be bullied into leaving. The bear is determined, but wary of the smaller predator's ferocity, and with good reason. The badger's a fierce adversary, and undaunted by the size of the bear. For the bear, it's really not worth all the effort. He'll find a meal elsewhere. In mid-afternoon, only a short distance from the pond at Broken Branch, a bobcat has begun to prowl. Eternally curious, He's keenly interested in whatever's happening nearby. And this includes watching the family of skunks who've just come into view. The mother's teaching her babies how to hunt for grubs. The bobcat's presence doesn't bother the skunk family at all. The little ones are eager to learn, but they're having a bit of difficulty keeping up with their mother. The bobcat sees that they've found something interesting. Instead of locating some of the large, delicious grubs, however, the mother skunk has disturbed a nest of stinging ants, and they boil out of the ground to attack the intruders. The bobcat can't resist moving in for a closer look. The baby skunks are quickly learning an unexpected lesson that it's wise to leave stinging ants alone. This time, the bobcat's curiosity has gotten him into trouble. He walked right into the area where the ants were disturbed, and the angry insects have gotten through his fur and are biting and stinging his skin. They're very difficult to dislodge once they've taken hold. As the bobcat rids himself of the last of the ants, one more of the area's predators, a golden eagle, has finished hunting for the day, and now will simply relax on a comfortable perch throughout the remainder of the afternoon. The golden eagle is a daily visitor to the area of Broken Branch. It often watches with interest the activities of the animals which are attracted here, such as the coyote, 
which has begun to hunt near the pond, hopeful of finding prey in the approaching evening. With predators so abundant here, life is hazardous for the prey animals, such as ground squirrels. Their lives are almost constantly jeopardized, and only the alert and the swift can survive. squirrel has managed this time to escape from grave danger. The larger predators require larger prey, and the cougar, out of his den and on the prowl again, often hunts the marmots, which live in burrows around rock outcroppings. These marmots are extremely wary rodents, though. A cougar knows he's lost. Now something else has taken his eye. There's a black bear moving towards some trees for which the cougar has a special interest. Although the black bear doesn't realize it, one of the trees in this little grove happens to be a favorite afternoon lookout post for the big cat, a tree the cougar considers his own territory. Fortunately for the bear, the tree he chose to climb is not the cougar's lookout tree. The cougar had made it clear that he'll tolerate no trespassing bears in his tree at any time. Though the bear is himself large and strong, he has no desire whatever to engage in a territorial struggle with the powerful cat. There's an ominous sense to the claw sharpening going on below. Once down out of the tree he's in, the bear will not be very likely to encroach in this area again. It has been an eventful day here in the area of the beaver pond. Now, in the last rays of the afternoon sun, a sort of peace settles over the land. A grouse moves casually to his favorite log, 
a place where he can send out his own message of territorial claim. And it is a pleasant sound in the early evening. Deepening twilight, another day ends for this little world in the mountains. For this little world whose center is the beautiful little pond at Broken Branch. Now and then, a family of beavers will erect its dam in such a way or at such a place that it causes problems. In by far the greater majority of cases, though, the ponds impounded by beaver dams, such as the pond at Broken Branch, provide a whole new and extremely valuable form of natural habitat in the wilderness. A complex cycle of life begins to evolve about these ponds. With predatory and non-predatory animals attracted and coexisting in natural balance and harmony. It becomes man's responsibility to see that such important natural habitat areas are not senselessly destroyed, but that they always have their place in the wild kingdom. Mutual of Omaha, people you can count on, has presented Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Mutual of Omaha, helping people find Medicare solutions for over 50 years. To learn more about plan options or how to protect your kingdom, contact us today. Mutual of Omaha, protect your kingdom.